Moving on to Temple University head coach Matt Rule. Uh, the Owls are 1-8 and eight overall, 0-5 in the American Athletic Conference. Temple was in action this past Saturday at Rutgers. Rutgers won the game 23-20. to 20. Uh, This week, Temple as well has an open date. The out- next game for the Owls will be November 16th against UCF. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us on the call. If you could take a minute to tie up the game against Rutgers uh, from this past Saturday, um, and tell us what you look forward to uh, in, an, in an open week as you get ready for UCF. Uh, you know, obviously very disappointed with uh, you know losing the game to Rutgers. Um, have a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, for for Coach Flood and his program. Uh, I thought that they uh, they made the plays at the end of the game that they had to make both on defense and offense. And uh, Gary Nova. Uh, deserves a lot of credit for for throwing an absolutely fantastic football, and I, I think our uh, I think our players you know move forward another week knowing that uh, we're getting better as a team, um, but uh, we, we you know we've come up a yard short, and uh, as we take it into the bye week, uh, we're we're bound and determined as a program to find a way to make up that yard and and and, and start to win those football games instead of uh, coming uh, coming just short. So. Uh, we enter the bye week. We're going to focus on our academics and taking care of our bodies and get ready for a great three-game stretch versus three tremendous conference opponents. Take questions for Coach Rule, please. Hit star one on your telephone to join the queue. The operator will introduce you. And we'll hear from John DiCarlo with alscoop.com. Hey, Matt. How you doing? Hey, John. Hey, John. Hey, I think I've probably asked you this before, but yeah, at a time like this, how much do you draw from... You know, what you what you kind of went through with the, with the previous staff when you were with Al, where you just I mean, let's face it. I mean, you know, Saturday had to be tough, and you, and you endure tough losses, and the players feel it, and the coaches feel it too, because you guys are human beings. How much do you kind of draw from that experience um, when when you have to apply it to to what you guys are going through now, when you've had a couple of games that have been right there, and then they and they end the way they do? Well, that, you know, John. Um, um, on a direct note, you know, I uh, like it very much to 2008. And we lost to, you know, U- Connecticut that year by three. We lost to Buffalo by two. We lost to Western Michigan by four. We lost to Central Michigan, who was, you know, the best team in the conference at the time by ten. We lost to Navy by uh, six on, the, you know, basically the last play of the game. And then, then we lost to Kent State by three. So, uh, you know, five of our seven losses were basically at the end of the game that year. And uh, our team... At the end of that season, finished on a high note. We won two games in a row, and and really propelled us into the following year. When, uh, as a program, uh, we were determined not to not to basically lose lose at the end of the game. So, uh, you know, I think it's it's very similar parallel. You know, we've we've had eight losses this year, and five of the eight losses we were within one score. You know, after 50 minutes of the game, and um, uh, you know, we just haven't we just haven't been able to get that last you know that last score that we need. But we're getting closer. Uh, so, uh, you know, I just think our players see, A, this is what hi- history says, this is what's going on now, and here's what we have to do to correct it. Um, yesterday and today, correct? Say, your phone, the phone's breaking up on me. I'm sorry, John. Say it one more time. Can you, can you hear me better now? Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, so you guys, you gave the guys off yesterday and today before you get back into things? Uh, you know, we usually have uh, Sundays off. And um, so, you know, I, I made a decision actually earlier in the year uh, we're going to spend a lot of time this week just, you know, the guys are going to lift and, and in study hall. Uh, the coaches all came in this morning. We watched the film with the players, and uh, we're actually going to all head out on the road recruiting, um, uh, you know, and take advantage of this week as a week to really, um, re- you know, really get some evaluations on some kids and allow the team to kind of heal up physically and, and uh, make sure we're all there academically so that when we pick up uh, probably practicing on Friday, uh, we'll, you know, we'll be a little bit, uh, we'll be a little bit more ready to go. And, um, I know. Chris had the, the ankle injury. How did you come out of the game health-wise, otherwise? You know, we, we, you know, we remained banged up. You know, Nate Harrison wasn't able to play. Dvorak was there, but he didn't play. Uh, Coyer came out of the game. So, you know, uh, you know, it wasn't able to return. So we still have a lot of, you know, nagging injuries that hopefully this week will help us. You know, when Nate Smith, um, you know, underwent uh, surgery this morning on his hand, which had happened a couple weeks ago, and he just continue to play with it, and, and hopefully he'll be back next week. So, you know, we, we, we're a banged-up football team, and, and, and the bye week comes at a good time. Uh, when you when you look back at the film, um, who, you know, what were some of the things that you, that you maybe didn't see on Saturday that stood out to you once you were watching the film? Um, you know, I, I think we saw a lot of, you know, probably on, on, the, on the field saw a lot of the things that were happening. I mean, 
Um, you know, I think on offense, I, feel like we, I think we feel like we left a lot of yards out there. There was a, several series there in the second half where it was just kind of three and out, three and out, and as you go back and watch the tape, you know, just just not making enough blocks up front and, and running through enough tackles to, to convert some of those plays. And, and on defense, you know, when they were in sort of the two-back run game, I thought we played extremely well and, and um, just haven't been able yet to, to, when people spread it out and kind of go no huddle, um, we haven't been able yet to, to stop that to the level we want to stop it. So the run game, you know, with all we stopped the run game, I think we held them under 100 yards or so. But uh, just sort of that two-minute offense we have to continue to, to develop against. Well, on the defensive side of the ball, um, does it get tricky when you want to, I know you've had some upperclassmen that have made some plays and then haven't made some plays, and then you might want to mix in some younger guys, but they're inexperienced too. What, what's the challenge that comes with trying to get the most out of those guys, but then maybe also leaving a, a, a true freshman out there when he's maybe not not quite ready yet, and then he gets left out on an island? How do you and Phil kind of manage that whole process in these last few weeks? Well, you know, I think you're, you're trying to you're trying to put guys in for the role that they're able to play in. You know, so you know, like in that last drive, you know, we were in some you know three down dime stuff. You have Jihad Thomas out there as a true freshman. You know, he blitzes. Uh, he's unblocked. A year from now, he's going to knock that ball out. You know, on, on Saturday, he just missed. You know, Jihad Pretlow's out there, and uh, he's playing because we need him to play. You know, right now, and he did some good things. And you know, but you know, they throw a double post, and you know, a year from now, he's going to pick that ball off, and and he just wasn't able to do that on Saturday. So. Um, a lot of these guys are kind of playing through experience and they're learning from their experiences. Now, um, you know, you don't want to put guys out there before they're ready, but in, in some cases, you know, <laughs> we need them to go out there and play right now. So guys are, you know, the guys are getting better and, and uh, they're going to continue to get better. And that's my one focus as we head into the bye week in the last three weeks. So it's not, it's not just, hey, we're going to play the last three games. I mean, we're going to go out there and, and try to put the last piece of this puzzle together like we did in 2008, and that is to... To, to finally figure out how to win at the end, you know, versus a good team, not not versus a team you roll over, but how to make the plays in the last minute to win. We didn't do it in 2008. We did it in 2009. Uh, we didn't do it so far this year, and, and hopefully the, these last couple of games we can. How do you guys, just last question for you. How do you guys, um, just as coaches, kind of navigate through this? Because it's got to, you know, these losses do have to take a lot out of you. And, um, again, you've, you've gone through it before, like we talked about, but, does the approach remain the same? Do you try anything different when you come off a particular loss like this that was tough, it was a, a you know a last minute loss, or is it just kind of sticking to the to the same principles and the same things you've been doing before? Yeah, we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll be unwavering. You know, we'll stay to what we do. I mean, at the end of the day, I would ask you, and I, you know, I mean, are we getting better? I mean, this is the same Temple off Temple team that played villain uh, played Rutgers last year and was up thirty five. Uh, you know, it was, was up 10 nothing. and I lost 35-10. And the kids were talking about that in the locker room. And I said, yeah, it was a new year, you know. And, and, and I'm proud of the fact that Rutgers took the lead. And P.J. and the, and the fellows went right back on the field. And we, we took the lead. And so, um, you know, that, this isn't the same team that we had at the beginning of the year, the team that lost to, you know, Florida and Idaho and Houston. They weren't playing the way we're playing now. And so, you know, as frustrated as maybe you are when you lose, um, you know, I, I don't have that luxury to, to worry about that stuff. I just have to keep pushing the team forward and know, hey, is what we're doing working? Well, we're not winning, but we're getting a lot better. And I didn't come here to kind of win some easy way. I came here to build a program. And that's what I told the players and I told everybody. And I feel like that's what we're doing because we're building it step by step the right way. And it, it shows up. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't talk to the people at Rutgers, but I think when we walked off the field, they knew that we were, the Temple's coming and Temple's going to be a program to deal with in the next couple of years. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Sure. And we'll move to Matt Breen with Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Hey, Matt. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, you said you were going to be hitting the road with your coaches this week. I was wondering if you anticipate any challenges down the program in a season like this. No, not at all. Um, uh, the, the response from us has been fantastic. I think people see the way we play, and uh, I think kids want to want to be a part of the, you know the way we play offense. I mean. Um, uh, they see that we have a lot of the elements in place. They see the you know the amount of points we're scoring. They see how close we are. You know, I had a guy stop me in the market yesterday. I uh, was getting lunch, and he just said, "Hey, man, you guys are this far away." So, I think you know, picking the program you want to go to and the university you want to go to is sometimes it's like buying stock. You know, you want to make sure you pick one that's on the rise. And um, you know, uh, the recruits that we're talking to recognize a chance to play or a chance to go to a great school, and they see 
they see the type of program we're building. You know, if the last 30 seconds of that game go differently, you know, does that, does that really change who we are? No. I mean, we're headed in the direction that people can see. And the 2008 um, thing you keep talking about, is that something you're telling the guys on the team now, you know, putting that out there that, you know, this just kind of reminds you of what 2008 was and, you know, what next season could be? I mean, that's what, uh, you know, that's what I'm telling them. Like, you know, the, the biggest thing, though, is, is the lesson we learned in that year. And that is, that is, you know, as coaches, as a program, we all have to demand from each other that we, that we each and every day fight for that extra yard. And, and, and that has, since I've gotten here, that's what doesn't always happen, you know. And, and um, you know, as we stood in the locker room, I said, well, you know, hopefully all of us understand why now. Uh, why in the off season we're asking for just a little bit more and why in game week we're asking for a little bit more because at the end of the day when you do lose those games, you want to feel like you put everything, your heart and soul into it. So, um, you know, we were a yard away from, from, from beating a very good Rutgers team. And to kind of go back to your recruiting question, uh, I think recruits also see where you are the way, and, and, and some of the best recruits say, Coach, I can be that yard. You know, I can be the guy that takes you over the top, and and that's what we're selling. We just need a couple guys to come in here, a couple guys on defense, a couple guys on offense to come in here and, and be that. They don't need to, be, they need to be a game changer. They just need to get us one more yard in these big games. Great. Thanks, Coach. And the last thing, where was that at that the guy stopped you at yesterday? Oh, boy. Uh, it's on uh, 20th and... Uh, it's on 20th and Spruce. It's, a, it's a called the Gourmet Market. with like a palm tree on it. I don't know. They, okay. they make a big bagel sandwich, but I can't think of what it was. <laughs> Good. Thanks a lot, Coach. Enjoy the week. Bye, bye. Take care. And we'll move on to Bill Morrison with 247 Temple Site. Hey, Coach. Uh, again, on the recruiting front, uh, could you give us a sense where the uh, coaches are headed and how they're targeting their efforts? Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to be a little bit more uh, spread out. Um, you know, uh, th just this time of year. So typically, as you know, we, we stick within a, a pretty local footprint. Um, but, but we're taking advantage of the bye week and the new NCAA rules allowing all the coaches to go out just to kind of cast our net a little bit wider as we look for, um, as we look for, you know, just some impact players maybe can help us right away. So I know we have a couple, we have some guys in Atlanta, some guys in Mississippi, some guys in Florida, some guys local, uh, North Jersey, Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, Northern California, Southern California, and Kansas. So, we're going to really take advantage of the week and the, and the new NCAA rule. Get out there and see see who else out there would be a good fit for us to go along with the uh, along with the kids that we already have committed, and we'll continue to recruit locally. Coach, one more. Given the struggles with the kicking game, I'm just curious to know if you are looking to sign a kicker, and with Layton graduating, uh, same question regarding a punter. Yeah, I think we're you know we're going to continue to look for a, a kicker and a punter. Um, you know, every year and. Especially, you know, uh, Paul's done a fantastic job for us. And, um, you know, even before the season, we had uh, had our eye out to see if there was a scholarship punter we could find who could come in and, and, and do a great job because, you know, obviously we've all been spoiled by first brand and, and now Paul punting over the last couple of years. Great. Thank you, Coach. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Take care. Time for one more for Coach Rule, please. Thank you. We'll move on to Chris Franklin with Coach and Player Magazine. Hey, Coach. How are you doing today? Good. Yourself? Not bad, thanks. Um, how would you assess how P.J. Walker's been playing so far, and what things do you think he can improve upon in this game? Uh, yeah, I, thought, I think uh, P.J.'s, uh, you know, really played well. I, thought, I think he's brought a dynamic element to our offense. Uh, he's allowed, allowed us to be uh, aggressive in our play calling because we tr can trust him. I think the, the biggest uh, challenge that he has to make moving forward is just to continue to allow the game to come to him, you know, and not – not try to make the big play when the big play isn't there, and that's really the uh, the key for a young quarterback. Once they learn, once they learn to, to to eliminate the big mistake, then then the big plays come. And so I think that's that's the next part of his progression that he has to master. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sure. Coach, we thank you for the time this week. Look forward to talking to you again next Monday. Sounds good. All right, and that is Temple with an open date. Uh, the Owls next game November sixteenth against UCF.